So hello everyone and welcome to our third lesson in the course about financial institutions. Our third lesson is going to be about bank balance sheets. We are going to look at the types of assets and liabilities banks usually have. It is important to talk about this topic because banks play an important role in transferring funds from those who have excess funds, it is mostly the savers, to those who have some interesting investment opportunities, entrepreneurs, and who want to borrow those excess funds to fund their interesting investment opportunities. Most of that transferring of funds done by the banks can be traced on their balance sheet. Hence, we're going to look at it. And by the way, this transfer of funds from those who have excess funds to those who have investment opportunities is basically the main function of the whole banking system. First of all, what is a balance sheet? Well, balance sheet is just a sheet which lists all of the bank's assets and all of its liabilities, including the capital. Balance sheet is divided into two parts. On one side of the balance sheet, we have a list of all of the bank's assets, total assets. And on the other side of the balance sheet, we have all of the liabilities that the bank has, including the capital. And as you might know, total assets is equal to the sum of total liabilities and that capital. Another way of looking at the bank's liabilities and assets, which is often mentioned in accounting classes, basically says that the balance sheet shows us the sources of funds that the bank has, or for that matter, any other company, and the uses of funds. In other words, how those funds are actually used. Liabilities represent all of the sources of funds. And to make it a little more clear, Think of it that way. If a bank borrows from another bank, that is a liability for the borrowing one, and this borrowing creates an incoming inflow of funds. Hence, liabilities are a source of funds, and assets are uses of funds. If the funds that the bank has are used to purchase some equipment, that equipment is an asset in that bank and it shows how the funds had been used. And in this example, they were simply used to buy that equipment. Capital in this case is another source of funds similar to liabilities. The difference is that liabilities is a source of funds that comes from the creditors, whereas capital is the source of funds that comes from the owners of the bank. Here is a simple example of a bank balance sheet, and this is what you would usually see as a list of assets and liabilities in a normal or regular bank. The source of funds for the bank or its liabilities consist of deposits. There are different types of deposits, demand deposits, time or savings deposits. There are many different kinds of deposits that the banks might create. Another type of liability for a bank is, of course, borrowings from others. And banks can either borrow amongst themselves, that is an interbank loan. Banks can borrow from other large corporations or banks can borrow from the central bank. And as we mentioned, capital is another source of funds that is supplied by the owners of the bank. On the left hand side, we have assets we show how the funds have been used. Part of the funds can be used as reserves within the bank. That is the cash that the bank holds. Part of the funds can be used to buy different kinds of marketable securities. That might be different types of government bonds, treasury bills, and so on, or different types of corporate bonds, bonds issued by corporations. Another part of the funds might be used to make loans to different customers, such as those who want to buy a house, mortgage loans, loans to businesses, commercial or business loans, 
loans to consumers, a car loan, for example, those loans that the banks give to each other, interbank loans, and some other part of the funds might be used to buy some other type of assets, equipment, buildings, and whatever else. Next, let's have a look at different types of assets and liabilities that the banks can have in a little more detail. Starting with different types of deposits. They might have demand deposits, which have different names, including, say, checkable deposits. Basically, these are the types of deposits that allow the depositor to use or to spend the deposited funds at any time, say, by writing a check against the balance or just withdrawing the money at any time or using a debit card to make the payments. These type of deposits, demand deposits, are a very cheap source of funds for the bank because banks pay very little or, in some cases, no interest on those types of deposits. The reason why banks pay no interest on these types of deposits is because they're actually not as convenient for the bank, since the money might be withdrawn at any time. It makes it somewhat difficult for the bank to use those funds in longer-term loans, for example. And at the same time, these types of deposits are convenient for the depositors, for the customers. After all, they don't have to keep their money under the bed. They can put their money into the relative safety of the banks and at the same time know that they can access those funds any day, except if it's a weekend or a bank holiday. Now, next we are looking at non-transaction deposits time deposits or savings deposits, these also have different kinds of names that different banks in different countries give them. But uh, the main idea of these deposits is that they don't allow the depositor to spend the money at any time. Instead, the depositors agree that they are not going to touch the money for some given period of time, which makes it convenient for the bank, as it allows the bank to use those funds more freely in, say, a purchase of securities or in a provision of a loan. These types of deposits are an expensive source of funds for the bank because the banks have to pay much higher interest rates on these types of deposits, on time deposits, savings deposits. And the reason for that is, again, because these deposits are convenient for the bank, but not as convenient for the depositor as they cannot access the money for some period of time without incurring some costs. Next type of a liability for a bank is, of course, borrowing. They can borrow either from the central bank, in which case this borrowing would simply be called central bank loans, or they would be called discount loans in the US. Banks can also borrow from other commercial banks, in which case these would be called interbank loans in many different countries or Fed funds in the US. And of course, banks can also borrow from large enough corporations. And lastly, another source of funds for the bank is its capital. These are the funds that are supplied by the owners of the bank. And there are two ways in which capital might be increased. Either through a purchase of newly issued shares of the bank or through retained earnings which is the part of the profit not paid out as dividends, but instead reinvested back into the business. Capital is very important for solvency of the banks, and it protects depositors as well as other creditors to the bank from losses. For example, if a bank loses some amount of money due to bad loans, those losses will be written off against the capital reducing the wealth of the owners of the bank, if the capital is large enough. Now we have finished with the liabilities and capital of the bank, that is the right-hand side of the balance sheet. We're now moving on to the left-hand side, the assets. First on the list, and the most liquid type of assets, are the reserves. What's included in the reserves of a commercial bank is all the cash that it has in its vaults, as well as the cash in its ATMs. Reserves also include the deposits of a commercial bank, 
that are held at the central bank, as well as deposits of some small commercial banks at larger correspondence banks. There are two types of reserves. Required reserves, which is the minimum amount of reserves that a bank must have according to the government regulation, that is a percentage of the deposits that a bank has, and excess reserves, which is anything on top of the required reserves. Next type of assets are marketable securities. These are, as we mentioned earlier, different types of government bonds, such as central government bonds, say, treasury bills in the US. There are also local government bonds, or as they're called in the US, municipal bonds, and corporate bonds. In some, but not all countries, commercial banks are allowed to hold equity shares on their balance sheets. Next, a very important type of asset for a bank is, of course, a loan. They are usually a large share of assets, and loans are not a very liquid asset at all, as it takes a long time for the bank to have the loan repaid in full. There are, of course, different types of loans. There are mortgages given to borrowers who want to buy a house. There are auto loans, business loans, consumer loans, credit card loans, interbank loans, and so on. Loans are a very important asset for the bank, and they are usually the main income earning asset. And lastly, banks can have some other assets on their balance sheet, such as maybe their office buildings, different types of equipment inside, maybe some of the houses they repossessed when a mortgage was not repaid. And for the end, fun fact, that gold that some banks have sometime in 2019 is going to be reclassified as another type of reserves. I think that's according to the upcoming Basel III Accord.